Happy New Year, everybody. John Ram Dean with you, and this is another installment of Fight News Now Extra. My partner Robin Black will be joining us shortly to chat about all things mixed martial arts related, including the rematch between the All-American and the Spider. Also making news, a Belgian fighter secured Fight of the Night honors recently in Southeast Asia. The Crusher crushed in his UFC debut, and a Strike Force veteran calls it quits before the age of 30. Those are just a few of the interesting stories worth chatting about. Now we dig up some of the details. Just like Dennis Hallman seemed to have welterweight great Matt Hughes' number, it appears that New York native Chris Weidman is the kryptonite of Anderson Silva. The middleweight champion followed up his July KO victory over the Brazilian with a second round TKO win at UFC 168 to retain his title. Silva sustained a broken leg after throwing a low kick that was checked by the American. The 38-year-old former champion underwent emergency surgery to have his damage repaired and is expected to make a full recovery and a possible return to the sport. The UFC touched down in Singapore for the first time this past Saturday and featured a welterweight matchup between former Strikeforce titleist Tarek Safadine and Hyung Gyu Lim, who subbed in for Jake Ellenberger, who was forced to withdraw from the contest. The South Korean showcased his heart as his Belgian adversary battered his lead leg, forcing him to fall numerous times through the contest. The Team Quest representative walked away with the decision win and Fight of the Night honours. And for years, Tatsuya Kawajiri was one of the top-rated featherweights competing outside of the UFC, while he finally had the opportunity to make his mark as he made his UFC debut in the co-feature in Singapore against undefeated Black Zillion stud Sean Soriano. After an early barrage that had the Japanese fighter wobbled, the crusher would settle down and use his grappling skills to wear out the youngster before sinking in the second round rear naked choke that forced the tap. The 35-year-old wins six in a row and makes for an exciting addition to the UFC's 145-pound division. And finally, former King of the Cage champion Quinn Mulhern has decided to call it a career as he suffered his second loss in as many fights, dropping the decision to former deep lightweight champion Katsunori Kakuno in Singapore. The 29-year-old Jackson Winklejohn fighter retires with a respectable 18-4 record, with 14 of those victories coming by way of stoppage. Happy to be joined by Mr. Robin Black. Happy New Year to you. And we got to talk about Chris Weidman first. Weidman clearly establishing himself as the number one middleweight in the world. The pressure's off for Anderson Silva. Will he come back to the UFC? Will he say, you know what, I've made millions. I'm going to step away from the sport. I have a feeling no is the answer to that. But for Chris, Chris Weidman, we know that Vitor Belfort is up next, which is a very exciting fight. And I think for Anderson Silva, yes, he could get back there in the mix. But Chris Weidman says, I feel bad if I had to fight this guy. I knocked him out. I broke his yeah. leg. And mentally, he's not going to be a challenge for me. And I think for Anderson Silva, he could say, you know what? I'm going to let my boy Jacare. I'm going to let Leona yeah. Machida. I'm going to let their, have them let those guys have their time in the sun, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. And hey, you, you hope that Silva does whatever makes him happy because he's one of the greatest fighters ever. If it makes you happy, every fighter likes to fight. It's just, it starts to get trained into your DNA. And you suspect at the very least, coming back one time to win will be the lowest level on his agenda. You never know how far he'll want to go. But Chris Weidman, you give this guy all the credit in the world because yeah. of his mental strength, because of how, how committed he is to hard work and how well he learns new things. But I also think really, I, I hope that people are crediting Ray Longo enough because you looked Every fighter has had a decade to start, every fighter and every coach, to start breaking down how you would fight Anderson Silva. And the Longo method seemed to work really well. One is when he goes to get that nasty clinch he's going to put on you, throw strikes. Don't sit there and try to defend that thing. The clinch, you feel the clinch, and you see this right hand come behind it. So the answer to the clinch is more offense. You see he, uh, the leg kicks were working really well in fight number one, so he broke out an old Jeet Kune Do uh, concept way of thinking. I mean, he's descended from Dan and Osan who's descended from Bruce Lee, and they had a strong concept of limb destruction, was a big part of Jeet Kune Do. And when you have a guy kicking you that hard and you put the hardest part of your body up against it, he can break his leg or hurt himself really bad on it. If I'm Ray Longo, I'm strutting around saying, I'm the man. I made Matt Serra beat George St. Pierre. Now I got Chris Weidman to beat Anderson Silva, not once, but twice. But I think Chris Weidman, this is a guy I think the UFC needs to get behind. However, fighting Vitor Belfort, uh, can't guarantee a victory there. But I mean, if anybody can do it, 
it's going to be Chris Weidman just because of the fact that he works so yeah. hard in whatever areas he's deficient, he tries to improve. I mean, we had the great pleasure to talk to him a number of times. I've gone down to his camp at Henzo Gracie's, and this guy just works his yeah. ass off. I know everybody works yeah. their ass off, but Chris Weidman is one of yeah. these guys that really understands where he's deficient and works his tail off to make sure that becomes a strength. He's an incredibly, incredible, likable guy, which is why it'll work for the UFC. You got this good-looking kid holding up a USA banner and stuff. That'll work great. But with that real likability, he's a bit weird. Like, he's desperate to win everything. He's playing ping pong with you, and he's desperate to win it. He's almost obsessed, which is what any of the greats in anything kind of need to be. I don't care if you're the greatest cyclist of all time, like Armstrong, or you're the greatest golfer. These people are single-minded, and, and every fighter is, but not to the level that this guy is and you take his ridiculous work ethic you take that extreme natural DNA confidence and you take a great coaching staff and a strong ability to learn and you get yourself somebody who can do it but you also got on the other hand Vitor Belfort who is a tough challenge for anybody he's turning guys lights off with kicks to the head and spinning kicks still getting better you know uh, his body is scary his, his physicality is scary especially for a guy with so much experience his confidence is scary so it's a tough one but you talk about Weidman and how much he hates to lose a matter of fact he was here at our party, Friends of Fight Network party, and he lost at ping pong to Ariel, and he was so yeah. pissed off, he ended up throwing the paddle, and he stormed away he from the table. He lost to Phil Davis at, at video that's games. That's right, too. and this is Didn't a guy like that, that just really hates to lose, whereas Vitor Belfort, and I've said it a number of times, he knows that this is the fight game. Yeah. You win some, yeah. you lose some, but in Chris Weidman's mind, there is no losing. Yeah. I will do whatever yeah. it takes to make sure I walk away with victory. And sure, he can lose at video games, and he can lose at <laughs> ping pong. He won't like it, but he can. But in the gym, he doesn't lose, and it's that commitment. He, he, it'll be hard to find anyone on earth who he has uh, lost a round of sparring to. Go search through everybody he sparred with and ask him. He doesn't go in the gym to lose that round, ever ever and it's that kind of commitment to it that will make him special can he beat Vitor maybe but if he does either way you're gonna see a very special fighter in the next decade that fight's set to go down in either May or July but don't go anywhere more fight news now extra is coming your way